Thank you so very much, Chairman Lujan, and it's great to serve alongside you on your uh, subcommittee. Uh, COVID-19 has put a strain on all of us, and it has been particularly challenging uh, to our healthcare systems. Uh, but one consequence of that is that it has forced advances uh, in telemedicine that otherwise would have taken uh, decades. Uh, in response to the pandemic, for example, CMS uh, allowed telehealth flexibilities uh, and encouraged Medicaid programs to follow suit. Uh, so this is some innovation that is a consequence of the challenge. Uh, this has allowed uh, patients to uh, remain in the safety of their homes while receiving care. It has allowed providers to safely provide high quality care and to be reimbursed for it. However, uh, due to the politics of healthcare coverage in our country, um, Medicaid non-expansion states like Georgia uh, have left uh, some 4.4 million Americans uh, in the coverage gap. In the case of Georgia, 500,000 Georgians who cannot access uh, these uh, services. This means that Georgians are forced to delay life-saving treatment uh, in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, Dr. Ransom, can you tell me what it would mean to patients and providers and hospitals? By the way, we've had 10 hospitals in Georgia to close in 10 years because of our refusal to expand Medicaid. What would it mean for these uh, communities um, and other uh, the other 11 non-expansion states where we to expand? expand Medicaid? Well, thank you for the question, Senator. I, I'm from Virginia, and we were a state that delayed uh, expansion of Medicaid. And, and when we eventually did expand it, it allowed us to see over 400,000 new patients in our healthcare systems across the Commonwealth. By allowing these folks to receive coverage, we've been able to save lives uh, we've been able to initiate care sooner and we've been able to, to prevent disease. So Medicaid expansion has been essential uh, for us to deliver uh, um, equal uh, and equitable care across the citizens of our Commonwealth. Thanks. Can, can you speak specifically to the impact of this uh, for rural communities in, in your state? When I that moved around Georgia, especially with the refusal to expand Medicaid, it seems to me that it's the rural communities uh, that have been uh, most hard hit by the politics of health care. Can you talk uh, about the impact, particularly on rural communities? Yes, sir. Living in a rural community, I've got many patients who were uncovered prior to the expansion of Medicaid. Uh, one patient in particular, his name was Sam, uh, delayed coming to see me after he lost his job. He did not have Medicaid because his wife worked. And it, um, he delayed coming in to see me by approximately nine to 10 months. By the time he came in, he was quite jaundiced or yellow in color. And uh, um, we got him in. Uh, we got the services done under some uh, um, under some provisions of, of, of care for folks who were uninsured. But unfortunately, he ended up passing away from a cholangiocarcinoma, which is a, a cancer of the uh, gallbladder and gallbladder duct. Um, I think if we had been able to get him in sooner when he first had symptoms, we would have been able to save his life or at least ease a tremendous amount of suffering that he had near the end of his life. Medicaid expansion in our area has been uh, incredibly important to get folks into our office uh, my wife, as I said, is a pediatrician. About 50% of her patients have Medicaid. Uh, I've probably doubled the number of Medicaid patients that I've been able to see in my office since we've had expansion. And it's enabled me to give them better care because they will actually come in when they first start seeing symptoms. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you, you see firsthand, as given your position as president of the American Academy of Family Physicians, the ways in which this is an equity issue around healthcare generally. We've got Medicaid in 38 states. Imagine having Medicare in 38 states or Social Security yeah. in just 38 states. But this issue around the digital divide is also an equity issue. Um, about one in every 11 locations in Georgia lacks reliable broadband services 
and 75% of these unserved locations are in rural areas. Commissioner Carr, um, uh, we are working uh, right now, and I was proud to join Chairman Lujan and others to champion increased broadband funding in the bipartisan infrastructure package. I hope the House will pass it soon. But even if that bill were signed into law today, it could take many years before some of these areas are served with high-speed internet. Commissioner Carr, what are some short-term solutions that Congress and the FCC can pursue to expand telehealth access in areas that currently lack broadband? Well, one thing we can do very quickly is we have about 326 million that's slated to come to Georgia as part of our RDOF initiative over 10 years. That could bring service to about 179,000. So we need to accelerate the process of getting that money that Georgia broadband builders were won at the end of last year actually out the door. Uh, so I think implementing the existing funds, because there are billions and billions out there that we can put into the ground, uh, I think that's important while the discussions go on about additional broadband funding. Thank you so much.